Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. So today we are gathered here to mourn the loss of one of the most beloved video game companies in Europe at least and that is Piranha Bytes. I mean it was beloved at some point. In recent years it was you know kind of obscure, kind of not so beloved anymore but you know for and if if there are Americans listening to this or even you know younger people you should know that Piranha Bytes was uh, at one point one of the most famous gaming companies in Europe especially and especially in Eastern Europe their games were extremely popular here so we have just heard the news that uh, Piranha Bytes is about to close or is in the process of closing. They belong to a company called Embracer Group, I believe. And I think that they are now just closing it. There have been many videos online recently talking about this subject. And so I wanted to make a video about it as well. As uh, as far as I understand it, uh, even the like the lead, uh, the head honcho at the company, a guy named Bjorn, uh, who was with the company since the beginning, he left in December, I believe. So I mean, it's it's over, man. It's over. But you know, they they had a. I wouldn't say that they had a good run. They had some good games, but they also had some not so good games over the years. But you know, Gothic 1 and Gothic 2, like I said, man, they were legendary here in Europe, in both in Central and in Eastern Europe. In the other parts of the world, maybe not so much, especially in the United States. I think that in the United States, their games were nowhere near as popular as they were over here. And so, Gothic 1 and Gothic 2 are completely legendary. They are some of my favorite games of all time. Definitely my favorite action RPGs of all time. They are extremely, extremely good. And by the way, what you see on the background is some footage from Gothic 1 that I took for a video review many, many years ago. So this is why this video is in 720p. Uh, I'm not going to record some new video game footage because I don't think that it's needed. Especially since I think that most people who quote unquote watch these videos they actually just listen to the audio in the background. So I'm not going to bother too much with editing this video. So anyway, what, what exactly made these games so special? I mean... In my opinion, I think it was it was the the atmosphere and the fact that you start out so weak. You know, in in most role playing games, you start weak, right? Because it's it's kind of like the whole point is the whole point is to to level up. But see, the thing is that in these games, you start out weak compared to everybody else around you and compared to everything else around you, and so when you actually manage to level up, when you actually manage to find a new weapon, when you actually manage to find an armor, and I might talk about this a bit later, you actually felt like you gained power, you actually felt like you achieved something. And the way that uh, they, they built these worlds, they structured them you know, with a hierarchical type of society, or societies, in, in fact. So like in the first Gothic game, you're like a, uh, you're like a, a criminal, right? You're sent to a, a penal colony, and you don't know exactly why you were sent there as a as the player. You you don't know the character's background. It's it's up for uh, the player himself to to think about the backstory. But anyway, so you arrive there and you find this like ec in this ecosystem where you have these three camps these three societies and they they are they're all so so different like you have the the old camp which is kind of like the the more the most uh, i'm not going i don't know if normal is the <laughs> the, the correct way but you know uh, the most standard type of society with you know it's strictly hierarchical you have all the chumps in the at the bottom and then you you have like uh, uh, people with uh, with a bit of power and then at the top they are they are ruled by this one guy called Gomez and 
uh, he, he rules over everybody else with a, an iron fist and it's like a very sort of, uh, of, of, of a strict hierarchical society. Then you have the, the new camp which are like uh, uh, sort of like uh, anarcho-capitalists. I mean not really but you know they, are, they have a bit more freedom there. It's like you know like because uh, the guards in the, the old camp they're the ones who who keep the, the order so you can't do much there without angering the guards but in the new camp it's not like that it's like every man for himself you know if, if you if you can't take care of yourself fine if not then you know, you know you're on your own and then then you had the the third camp which was a, a religious camp it was the the sect camp the swamp camp basically they're, they're a bunch of like I wouldn't call them hippies necessarily, but yeah, they they do smoke a lot of uh, a lot of weed and uh, they worship this uh, deity called the Sleeper, and it's so cool because because each each of these uh, each of these camps like they they have a a different uh, different worldview, and uh, they you know like the the old camp because the story is that the you know the there's a kingdom and they are at war with the orcs and they are losing badly and so in order to win they need this material called magical ore with which to forge weapons to fight the, against the orcs and you can only find this magical ore on an on an island of Corinus in the valley of mines and so they send uh, all sorts of criminals there even for e even those who are uh, who are sent uh, there for you know for petty crime essentially and in order for the criminals not to escape they wanted to erect a magical barrier to keep them in but something went wrong and so the, the barrier expanded to a greater size than expected and so everybody in, including the guards and the mages as well as the criminals of course the convicts were trapped there so now you have like this 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 uh, this ecosystem that that was created there and uh, you, you know, I mean, the the old camp, they they made an arrangement with the king. You know, king, uh, it's okay. We can we can make a deal. Uh, we send you ore, and you send us everything that we need. You know, uh, all sorts of stuff like food and booze and women, of course. And uh, the new camp is not like that. You know, they don't want. To, to cooperate with the king and there's a reason why they, they don't want to be well you know it's it, it's part of the story it's 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 really cool and uh, they have their own their their own plan with how they want to get out of uh, the barrier and then like I said there's there's the the swamp camp who has their own plan they they plan on uh, summoning this deity of theirs to help them escape and you know it, it's so cool like like the first act in gothic one is one of the the most immersive experiences experiences that I have ever experienced uh, in a video game ever. Like it's it it pulls you it pulls you right in, and you meet so many people because it's 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 very it's quite character driven in in a way sort of because it's it's about who you meet who you know, who you befriend, who you make enemies of, and there's all, all these kinds of relationships that, that you make. And like I said, you start out extremely weak. Like it's, I think it's the, f the only RPG that I have, I have ever played <laughs> where you start at level zero. <laughs> you don't start at level one, you are level zero and your combat, <laughs> your combat abilities perfectly reflect this status. And like I said, you you manage to level up and you manage to you know the the point is that you get to decide later on you do quests for these camps and you get to join one of these camps and then you you uh, increase in rank uh, in these societies and the rank is determined by the armor you wear like the armor is extremely important in in this game like in in no other role playing game is armor as important because not only does it give you a much much better survivability chance but it also uh, symbolizes your status that you have in the colony it is so cool it's so cool and then there are many mechanics uh, in these games that make them immersive that like the developers thought of mechanics that pulled you inside these uh, these worlds that 
uh, you know a, a lot of games nowadays they are not immersive in the slightest like they are so mechanical they are so artificial ironically you know despite the fact that graphics have improved you know and it's so like i mean you look at uh, stuff in unreal engine 5 and it's you know it's it's almost photorealistic and i i, I know i know you know like 25 years ago people looked like <laughs> at games like uh, half-life or something and they thought that wow you know graphics will never top this uh, you know but no i mean see uh, th there are certain things that this game does like for example like in a modern game like if you have like a modern you know triple a action rpg whatever you have an in-game gps like how is that in any way immersive when you have a, a map that you know it shows you everything it shows everything like the entire landscape shows you the enemies it, it shows you everything how is that in any way shape or form immersive not in god no in gothic you don't start out with like a map you have to acquire a map and you know it's kind of expensive but it's okay because you can you can sneak inside the cartographer's hut at night you know just saying just saying and you can acquire a map like this and the map you know it's it shows you your position and it shows you uh, some of the surrounding areas it doesn't show you everything because some of the, the areas in the valley of mines are not explored because they are controlled by the orcs and so no human there is set foot there and so this is this, this is like it, it it's so amazing it's so simple but it's so efficient in creating an, an just like an an immersive experience and another thing like you know in most rpgs when you level up you go to your character sheet and then you just uh, press the plus uh, button and you assign uh, you assign your skill points and your attributes uh, and, and whatever no not in not in gothic not in gothic in gothic what happens is when you level up you gain skill points and then you have to find people to train you you have to find trainers you don't train just by yourself because i mean how like, like for example how would you know like to to forge a sword if there's nobody to show you how to forge a sword like you you can't right and even with weapons like you can't just i mean yeah you can in gothic you know at level zero pick up like a branch and you you uh, hold it with two hands like an idiot and you swing it around because you don't know any better you don't know how to fight but you find the master swordsman and he trains you you know in exchange for those skill points obviously but then of course he might train you you know in exchange of gold you might have to do a quest for him it's extremely extremely immersive and uh, one of the nice things about the like the the, the weapon um, like the the weapons is that uh, when when they, they teach you like uh, when you like gain a rank in in weapons you actually uh, the animations change and you can do new moves and you can do new combos so it's not just oh you do more damage no you know it it's it's really good and with uh, with the magic the same you know you have to become a magician you know you don't start out as a mage because you're just guy you know you're, you're a convict but you can uh, if you do some quests and if you you know you impress the the right people yes you can become a mage and then you are being initiated in in these these ranks these circles and you know it, it's it's so cool like in in the first uh, gothic you you just buy runes because you need runes that give you spells so you just buy them but in the second game it's more immersive because you actually you actually craft them so you know to craft them you need to to find materials and s certain materials and uh, they are like difficult to find so anyway and and, an an and another and you know two more cool things about the, the immersion thing uh, one is that uh, animals don't attack you like the moment that they they see you that the moment that they aggro you like because in in every single game that i know I know personally like I, I i cannot think of any single game where the you know the monsters don't aggro you the moment that they see you no 
Here, they don't. Here, they they at first they warn you, you know. Uh, they 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 will you know they will hiss at you they will growl at you you know to, to let you know you know this is my territory you know back off that is so cool that is so amazing like why why was this never implemented in any other game I, I don't understand I don't understand and it's it's, uh, it's even better because not all animals act like this because if I remember correctly the raptors because there's there's like dinosaurs sort of in this game so there are some some raptors. And uh, those uh, those act differently, actually. Those the moment that they see you, uh, they start to slowly walk towards you. And you know, you, you can walk away, but you know, if if you just sit there, you know, they they're just they're going to charge you eventually. It's so cool. And and the the final thing is that uh, when you fight human opponents uh, with the melee weapons, uh, and uh, you get them to like zero point hit points or I guess one hit point uh, you don't kill them you just knock them down and th this is this is so so nice because uh, you know and and they say like the the NPCs tell you in the game you know you know uh, brawls here they are not uncommon you know guys fight all the time but murder is not tolerated so you know if uh, if you knock down an NPC uh, you can rob them while they are down. You can pickpocket them. You can take the, their weapon and you can take the the stuff that they have. And of course, if you are knocked down, they can do the same to you. And and uh, you know you can uh, give them a, a coup de gras and uh, kill them uh, if you want. But again, <laughs> that's not uh, that's not going to to make people happy. And again, this is something that has never been implemented in any other game that I know. If you guys know of any other game that has mechanics like like the way that uh, I described them in Gothic, you know, let me know, please, because I don't understand why did nobody else copy them? It's just it, it's so weird and it's because a lot of these, like I said, they are they're immersive and they make sense. And you know, some of them, like you know, the map, I get it. You know, it, it games that are, you know, like like they were never made with like uh, rocket surgeons in mind. Okay, you know, you don't have to be a genius to play you know 99.9% .9 of video games out there. But that today they're, they're like steam. They're made like with the complete lowest common denominator idiot in mind. It's it's so frustrating, and you know. It's it's one of the reasons why these games are are still to this day you know they're they're still so good and they're still so good and so unique and I think that even if you haven't played them like like you should give them a chance yeah like the the controls are kind of bad in, especially in the first game because like for example if you want to pick an item from the ground you don't just like click you have to hold the mouse button and then push forward or you know. I guess the 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 better way to play these games sorry the better way is to just use the the keyboard actually you can just play them with the keyboard or you can just plug in a, a controller and then use anti micro or something and play play them with the controller it's uh, it's perfectly possible so i mean the controls are kind of weird like the inventory management is kind of bad like in both games but you know i i think that it's uh, it's perfectly doable and you know the first game, I would uh, I will admit the first chapter is the the best part of, of uh, the entire game. After uh, because it gives you a lot of freedom in how you in how you do things in how you solve quests. Um, afterwards, it it becomes linear, but you know it, it, it's still good. You know because there are there are no more side quests. Uh, it's basically just the main quest and that is it but you know it's it's still good and the world is so fun to explore because it's very it's very small like in in modern open world games they make huge worlds but they are they're wide as an ocean and deep as a puddle whereas with gothic it's it's the exact way around they are they are they are so compact. There's so much stuff that you can find everywhere. There's so many secrets. It's it it, it it's amazing, guys. It's it's just amazing. And so this was uh, Gothic One, and then uh, they they came out. Uh, I don't know a year or two later with Gothic Two, and it was uh, bigger and better. Well, 
the story was i think that it was weaker uh, than in the first game uh, most definitely it was uh, a lot less unique it was kind of generic you know because uh, you are being told uh, right at the beginning uh, there are these uh, dragons and uh, you know they're evil so uh, you have to stop them and that's that's kind of like the plot it's kind of degenerate but uh, sorry not, not degenerate uh, generic I wanted to say but uh, it's you know it it's good but other than that uh, they they really improved the game like um, you know the interface was a bit better. Um, like the controls were a little bit better and you know just the world was so it was uh, much bigger because because it also contained the world from from Gothic one because at one point you return to the valley of mines and it's one of the the best moments it's one of the best moments in the entire series where where, where you go back and you see you, you see you see the place that you've been uh, before and you know there are there are many things that are familiar but then there are, there are also many things that have changed and it's uh, it's it's quite uh, quite amazing and uh, I mean, like like I said, uh, they improved a lot of stuff. Uh, for example, uh, they added uh, some new mechanics, like they added crafting, like they had uh, smithing uh, in the first game, but it was you know you could only craft like the basic sword, and that is it. But but here uh, they added um, they added uh, weapon smithing, and uh, they also added alchemy. And you know, I mean, crafting nowadays it's so bad. Like I don't understand how do why do people enjoy modern crafting systems? Because it's nothing but uh, you know you fill your inventory with the, with all of this useless, pointless garbage. You know, and in the hope of 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 creating something. You know, may, and you know maybe it's good, but but it's it's like so it's. Like it's so cluttered. It's like it. It's not in, in Gothic. It's not like this at all because all of the ingredients. And you know, maybe not all of them, but many of the ingredients that you find, they are rare. Like when you find like these ingredients, they are extremely valuable because. You know you can craft the runes with them if uh, if you are a mage. Like I said, if you uh, you can learn uh, alchemy, and uh, there are these uh, potions that um, add permanent stats to your abilities. So the ingredients for these are extremely rare and extremely valuable. So exploration is highly rewarded, and then you also have smithing, and you can forge some really cool weapons. And again. The, the ingredients are very rare, they are part of, of quests, you know, they, they are hidden, like they mean something, like the ingredients in these games, like they, they actually mean something. And, uh, you know, uh, what else? I mean, they, um, you know, it, it, it kind of, <laughs> you know, one thing about Gothic 2 is that they, it, it kind of started the, the whole, uh, the whole copy pasting. I, I, I'm not going to say necessarily copy paste, but you know, a lot of the, the same beats that uh, they made in Gothic 1, they uh, they started f uh, following them in the subsequent games. Like for example, uh, here there are there are also uh, three factions that you can join. You can join the militia in the town and uh, later become a paladin, or uh, you can uh, become a mercenary, later on become a dragon hunter, or you can join like the monastery and uh, become a monk or a, a novice. Sorry. And then later on become uh, an actual magician. But I'm, I mean, again, the, the the way that that you join these factions, it's so unique. Like for example, uh, like if you're uh, if you want to go into the monastery, you have to. I think you have to gather to make a donation of one thousand gold and uh, one sheep. That's it. This is what you have to bring uh, bring to the monastery in order to be to become a novice. And then you know you have to solve all these quests. And there are so many NPCs there. And, and again, like each um, like each society has so you know it's so well structured and it's it's so unique. Uh, and you know. Uh, I wouldn't say that every like uh, subsequent playthrough is going to be you know completely unique, but you know at, at least it's going to be partially unique. And like I said, the the world is I think it's like three or four times larger 
than Gothic One, but I guess not. But uh, just as in Gothic One, it's uh, it's again very compact. Uh, there's lots of secrets. It's um, it's really good, and uh, the the city I think it's called Corinis, the the, the main city. Uh, it's it's really cool. Like. Um, it's very, very well designed, you know, with all of these, uh, it, it, it's very lively, it, despite the fact that uh, they only used simple scripts for the NPCs, like, you know, at from uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. the smith is in the smithy and you see him uh, forging weapons and then from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. he's at the tavern and drinking and then he goes to, you know, it, it's simple, but they like they work like they work because the game is again extremely extremely immersive and one last thing that i want to say about uh, these two games is that you know the the npcs that uh, you meet like the characters they are all so memorable like you know <laughs> you have a uh, you have like these uh Japanese games, right? These uh, uh, games where you have like a, a harem and stuff. Like, no, in Gothic you have a bro harem, and you, you know it, it's a single player game, so no, there's no party. But you know, you make all of these friends, and you know you do quests together, and they're never in your face. Like they never annoy you. You know they're out there, and they're doing their own thing. But you know from time to time, you know you you meet. And you might do a quest together, you uh, you might help them, they might help you. It's extremely, it's extremely natural. And, I mean, these are some of the, the, the best NPCs that I, I've ever met in an, an RPG. Because uh, you as a player will start to really, really care about them and, and really, you know, form friendships with them. Because, you know, compared to stuff like... <laughs> Like the NPCs from Bioware, like a lot of people, they say, "Wow, Bioware's NPCs, they're like, they're so amazing, they're like so believable." No, they're not. They're just cringe. Like, who gives a shit about those stupid NPCs, man? Like, you know, they, just a bunch of whiny NPCs with like daddy issues and mommies, and like you know, whatever, man. You know, who cares? You know, I mean, like, like, it, like it's, it, you know, in Gothic, it's, it's me and Diego. And Lester and Gorn and Milton, you know, we're bros for life, man. We're like friends, you know. We, you know, we, we stick together, and it's it's so good. Like uh, at, at the the end of uh, Gothic 2, you have to like uh, gather a bunch of people to to go on a, uh, on a cruise with the ship, and uh, you have to gather, you know, uh, various people who have various skills. You see. Because everybody there has some skills, you know, some some of them are, you know, alchemists, some are smiths, and you know, and blah blah blah. And uh, so you go around the, the world, and uh, you, you, you start to remember, hmm, uh, what what NPCs do I know? You know, because it's, it's not written like in the quest log, oh, you know, go talk to X, Y, and Z. No, it's who the player met. And it's who the player, you know, en enjoyed most. And... <coughs> and you, you you go and uh, and you talk to them and you ask you know you, you know you want to come and, and, and you know they'll, they'll come and it, it's so good there's such a good sense of uh, camaraderie in, uh, in in these two games it's uh, it's really good it's it's very unique I, I, I have never experienced anything uh, like this in in any other video game uh, to be honest so yeah I mean uh, play the first gothic games you know some people say you know maybe you can skip gothic one bullshit don't skip gothic one don't be an idiot play gothic one it's completely relevant to the story the game is good yeah again it's it's, it's kind of clunky but you know so is gothic 2 so i mean you know pl play them together like i said in gothic 2 you will return to gothic 1 it's you know, like the experience that you're going to have you know uh seeing you know some old faces you know some old locations uh in new situations it's going to be so good you're you're going to to to, to simply love them i love them i mean there's a reason why these games are so they're, they're like so beloved in uh, in uh, in certain parts of the world because they they are amazing and they are unique and there's really nothing like them what is there yeah, so uh, <clears throat> in uh, 2006, I became uh, a cynic when it comes to video games. 
because uh, in 2006 uh, we saw two games that uh, were released that I was very hyped for and uh, you know it was the last time that I was ever hyped for a video game you know uh, and those were uh, the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion and Gothic 3 now the Elder Scrolls Oblivion is just complete and utter garbage like uh, you know I'm probably going to do a video about it but you know it's probably not worth doing it but you know with Gothic 3 <sighs> Like, it was bad, but at the same time, you know, at least it was ambitious, you know, at least, you know, you look at it, and, you know, at, at least they tried, you know, at least they tried to make something grand. So, you know, they made like this giant world that was not as interesting and, you know, nowhere near as interesting as the previous worlds, um, you know, content was very sparse. And uh, it was very repetitive, like uh, you go to like the main continent, like I said in Gothic 1 and 2, it takes place on an island and now you, you arrive at, on the main continent and it's being overrun by the orcs and it's cool because um, it, it, it's very, very non-linear. This is what I'm going to say. It's one of the most non-linear games that, that I know, like I believe, I believe and I'm not sure somebody might, might correct me. You can kill every single NPC in Gothic 3 and still be able to finish the game. Like no and like no NPC is like 100% relevant to the main plot. You know, I, I mean I, I mean I'm not going to say that they they are completely random. Like you know, they are relevant to the plot, but they're not tied in such a way that you you cannot that you cannot kill them. And not not even Fallout is like this, because in Fallout you couldn't kill the, the Overseer, in Fallout 1, you know. But here you, you can kill everybody. And it, it's, it's cool that, you know, again, there are, there, are, uh, there are many factions and you can actually join with the Orcs, uh, which is cool, like you could be a bad guy this time around if you wanted to, but... Um, and, you know, and, and, and about the Orcs, like uh, the Orcs in the, the previous two games, they were kind of, like... You saw that, you know, they, they were kind of, they kind of had a sort of civilization, culture, let's say, but they were quite uh, barbaric at the end of the day, you know, they were kind of like standard orcs, but here in Gothic 3, they were, they were actually, you know, they were actually, I wouldn't say civilized again, because they are barbaric, but... You know, like they're intelligent. Yeah, you, you know, you can you can talk to them, you can reason with them, you can work for them. Again, you can you can join them if you want. Uh, it was really cool, but the problem is that again the content was extremely spread out. A lot of the quests were very very repetitive. There were these uh, a lot of these you know gather uh, ten ingredients uh, there, kill ten monsters there. Uh, yes, there were a lot of locations and a lot of quests, but like I said. <laughs> A lot of them were just MMO tier, and the NPCs, yeah, they were, you know, most of the NPCs that uh, you knew from the previous games, they were present in Gothic 3, but they were just a shadow of themselves, like, you know, you, you go and, and, and talk to, you find Diego, and he has like three lines of dialogue, and I'm, I'm like, what the fuck, and you, and you meet Zardas, and again, it's like, you know, it, it was extremely, extremely rushed. Like the first uh, part, uh, Mirtana, uh, the, the main template zone, it had the most content. Then uh, the southern area, Svarant, uh, the desert area, it also had a lot of content and it was cool. Like, uh, you know, we saw a, a different uh, type of environment. It was an, uh, an Arabian Nights type of environment, let's say. Uh, you know, it, it, looked, it looked good, I guess. But then you get to Nordmar, the the last region in the north, and it's it's just it it was just extremely extremely bad. It was just extremely repetitive. Like like there's a quest where you had to to destroy uh, a forge um, where the, the orcs made the uh, magic core weapons, I think, and it was. I don't know how many how many monsters were there, how many orcs there, there were hundreds literally hundreds hundreds that you had to slay like it was just copy paste copy paste copy paste it, it was just it was just completely completely awful and 
I, I played it with, uh, you know, when it came out, I, you know, play, played it without a patch and uh, I could not play it very well because my computer was was very bad back then and it ran very, very poorly and I was very upset. But in a way, you know, I kind of realized, you know, this is uh, this isn't what we wanted. This isn't uh, what uh, people uh, expected when uh, when they heard the uh, Gothic 3, right? But I did play it a few years later with uh, the community patches and it was it was still kind of bad. Like the combat system was just awful. Um, if you do play it, I don't know, maybe the, the subsequent community patches improved the melee combat, but uh, back then, like, it was really bad, like, um, animals were extremely dangerous, like, like, even a wild boar, like, like, it could kill you, like, it, it could destroy you, but then you could, like, mow down entire armies of war with your sword, and, you know, it was just extremely bad, extremely bad melee combat system, uh, so instead I played as an archer, so, you know, as an archer, it was bearable, uh, I think that with a, as a mage it would have been even better because you, you had like AOE spells. Eh? But, you know, I mean I finished the game once. I don't think that I am ever going to replay it to be honest. It's kind of bad. And you know, it 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 it, it marked like the, 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 the beginning of the end uh, for uh, Piranha Bytes and you know. Uh, I mean, this, uh, you know, I, I wanted to make this video about Piranha Bytes, the company, but, you know, in the end, it, uh, it was about uh, the Gothic series. And uh, after that, and not Piranha Bytes, another studio, uh, they released an add-on for uh, Gothic 3 by an Indian studio. And uh, it, it, it was just complete shit. Uh, everybody hated it. And then uh, Joe Wood, the publisher, I don't know who hi wh whom they hired, but uh, they made the Gothic 4 Arcania, or just Gothic Arcania, I don't remember, and I haven't played it, but everybody else who, who played it hates it, like, I, I have no intention of playing that game. And then, uh, pff, I think it, like, it was 2009 or so, um, Piranha Bytes, you know, came, you know, came back from the, <laughs> the dead, almost, and uh, they released a game called Risen, which uh, I'm not going to, to describe uh, in detail here, but basically the first Risen game was, it was, it was kind of like Gothic. Uh, it was good, it was a good game, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it again, it, it followed the, the same beats, so again with the three factions and you're on, a, on an island and blah blah blah, but you know, it, it was a good game, so people thought that, hey, you know, Piranha Bites is back. And then uh, they released Reason 2, <laughs> and uh, it was pretty bad. I, I, I only played it briefly, but it was bad, like like the combat system, like they made it even worse than in the first Reason, and it, it, it was just bad, it, it, it looked like, it played like a console game, it was bad, and then they released Reason 3, and it was even worse, right? And uh, people thought, you know, this is the end <laughs> for Piranha Bytes, you know? <laughs> I mean, how how can they come back from this? And then, in 2017, I want to say, they released a game called LX, which I know it sounds like a, like a, a laxative or something, you know. When you're constipated, just take LX and uh, you'll feel light again. You know, it's, it's a stupid name, but anyway, uh, I haven't played the game because, um, you know, my... <laughs> My current computer that I am recording uh, this on is kind of old and I don't know if uh, it's going to, to run very well, uh, LX very well, but I have recently bought a new PC, which, uh, you know, I, you know I, I played a little bit uh, with it, uh, I installed Linux again on it and uh, I installed LX, it was actually one of the first games and uh, it ran very well. Uh, even under Wine, the performance was very good uh, with, uh, with pretty much everything on high and you know I, I like I I paid like I don't know like 750 euro for this PC so it's not like the latest and greatest so you know you know and uh, once I'm done with uh, this current PC I still have some stuff to do with it then uh, I'm going to switch to my new PC and then uh, the first game that I'm going to be playing that I'm going to be playing is going to be Alex uh, for sure for sure 
uh, because I heard, uh, you know, I heard some mixed feelings. Some people like it, some people don't like it. I kind of want to try out the whole jetpack thing. It uh, it seemed uh, sort of interesting. And then they uh, they released <laughs> LX2, <laughs> and uh, even people who liked LX1 uh, hated it. So uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, it's over, man. It's over. Uh, and I think that they got, like, for, I think, for both LX games, I think uh, they actually got fi uh, financing from the German government to to fund their games, you know, I guess, uh, you know, because it's uh, Piranha Bytes and Gothic are, like, uh, uh, German uh, brands, famous German brands, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, you know, I mean, LX2 is a is a is a flop. I mean, uh, you know, when uh, you have more people playing a mod for a game that you released 20 years ago, then there are people who are playing your newly released game. I mean, you know that it's over, right? I mean, you know that you are completely out of touch. Uh, you have no idea what you're doing, you know, I mean, it was only a matter of time. I mean, I'm surprised that the studio has uh, has managed to survive for this long. I mean, I'm not glad that they're gone, of course, but again, it's like... I, I don't think that many people had many high hopes for them, you know. I kind of liked when they existed because it was, you know, it was like, you know, there's this <laughs> this famous studio, this legendary studio that once was so good and you know maybe one day you know maybe one day uh they're going to get uh, the dream team back and you know put a a proper sequel to gothic 2 and you know and, you know and we knew that that was never going to happen but you know it, it was a nice dream it was a nice thing to have there in the background but now that uh, that dream is uh is dead jim it's dead but you know it's it, it's okay, I mean, it is what it is. Um, one thing that I want to say is that uh, the gothic uh, scene, the, the gothic fan base is definitely not dead. It is still very much alive and kicking. I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they released, uh, a, a Polish team uh, released an, uh, an, an, a mod, a total conversion mod for gothic 2 called uh, the Chronicles of Mirtana Ar Arcolos, Archalos, and uh, it's really, really, really good. I mean, that is the sequel to Gothic 2 that everybody wanted, right? Everybody wanted that, you know, they didn't want, you know, Risen 3 and LX2, okay. So, one last thing that uh, I want to say before... Uh, before ending this long video, I did not plan this to last for one hour. I'm I, I I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but I was I I got really excited because I'm a I'm a huge uh, huge fan of uh, of the first two Gothic games at least. And uh, one thing that uh, Piranha Bytes achieved, they achieved a miracle with uh, Gothic because they achieved something that nobody else has ever managed to do and that is to bring together under one banner the Germans the Poles and the Russians these three people groups they all hate each other they never got along well in history unless it's about Gothic they share their love for Gothic so you know for this reason alone we can say that, you know, in my opinion, like the German government should put Piranha Bytes in the history books so that, you know, children at school learn <laughs> that somebody managed to make peace, you know, for a very, very short while and, you know, in a, in a small, uh, in a small sphere, let's say, to make peace between three people that never <laughs> got along. So, with that being said, rip Piranha Bytes, press F to, to pay respects, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have fun playing Gothic.